This is a link that was uh, given to me by a viewer in the comments section. It's got some good stuff. I'll be fast forwarding through some of the technical parts of it, but just to show what plasma flame actually looks like, let's check it out. This is your traditional wax candle. Uh, boring. This is also a candle, just a lot cooler. A hidden gem of high voltage electricity is the flame discharge. It's hard to determine who birthed the idea first, either the Soviets or the United States, but this idea first popped up in the 1920s. Who ultimately discovered it doesn't really matter though, because flame discharges are so interesting. I can't stress that enough. They're a form of high frequency, high voltage discharge that can be hard to distinguish from actual fire. In fact, small flame discharges resemble a small candle flame. Well, with the help of my friend Leon from the Tesla Undemir YouTube channel, I'll be making my own plasma generator capable of not only a plasma flame, but also wireless power transmission at the same time. And you can bet they'll be acrylic. Uh, if you're new, you won't get it. This basically is an electrical replacement for fire, except it goes a step further. It's totally silent when operating and being high voltage in nature, it's attracted to a grounded object. So fire that's attracted to you. Sounds legit. This candle's powered by 16 to 32 volts at about four and a half amps. The flame discharge you see results from a class E 10 megahertz oscillator. That means the electricity bounces back and forth 10 million times a second, which permanently ionizes the air into a flame. Being high frequency, high voltage AC, it's able to wirelessly light a variety of bulbs and tubes from several feet away as well. It also apparently cooks walnuts. Now, ultra high frequency circuits like this aren't exactly my forte, so to speak. And that's where Leon comes in. He's basically a modern Tesla, sounds like Schwarzenegger, and specializes in flame discharges. So we sat down for a quick Skype session to kind of hash out the finer details of how exactly to build this. So like, this is where I'm gonna fast forward because they get into the technicalities of how to build one of these and uh, the wraps of the coil, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But then he goes back to showing you that this kind of flame burns hotter than standard fire. Matched. I then tried a center. one inch diameter, 0.4 millimeter wire, two and a half inches long. This produced a half inch flame, and I got super excited. A four turn primary. This killed the oscillations altogether. No flame. I tried raising up the primary and lowering it down. Long, super hot. I then tried a third resonator, one inch diameter, 0.5 millimeter wire, three and a quarter inches long. This produced a three quarter of an inch long flame that was super awesome, like it, it already looked like a candle. Running through the same primary coil variables, I tried four, five, and seven turns. And five turns lowered down produced, or inch and a half to two inches long, super hot. And adjusting the input voltage changes the flame size. I kept killing MOSFET and I have and to electro right works or rather resonator to have freaking beautiful EMF field that can like that theory and smashing it into a package like this results in this a flame made of pure plasma hot enough to melt steel it also puts out a wicked strong EMF field that can light up light bulbs wirelessly the only candle though. so a flame made out of pure plasma that's hot enough to melt steel that's what we're seeing and in many of the like the original videos that people were making on the paradise fires they would slow it down and show you that there's these electrical blue flames in the fire indicating the temperature that's much hotter than the standard yellow and orange flame of traditional fire lights your lamp for you flame size can be adjusted with and the thing is just freaking beautiful it's the perfect little candle size for now be this walnut it's also always um, also thank you 
I'll leave the link in the description for those who want to watch the entire video. I just thought it was very interesting to be able to see actual plasma fire that is confirmed plasma fire. And what is the fuel that it's burning? He says it ionizes the air. So it's the actual air itself that catches on fire with this high frequency electromagnetic influence, microwave energy, wireless electricity, that type of stuff. Thank you to Awakening Ambience for bringing this to our attention. Says, thank you, Jeff. I knew you were looking at the Canada fires. Thank you for awakening me. I haven't stopped researching since the day I saw your channel. After much research, like you, trying to get to the source of it, I think it's from a weakening magnetosphere from the moving North Pole, after all. The excess solar radiation is grounding into the Earth during jet lightning storms. Look that up. It's amazing and a new phenomenon which throws the excess ions into the ground, which moves like water and fractals like lightning seeking grounded objects and burns out in an electrolysis-like combustion. Since, it, since it's in the earth, it tunes to the earth, much like the plasma channel's fired plasma fire generator, who took a while to tune his coils before creating his plasma fire which seeks grounded objects, as he mentions. The Earth is like the wireless plasma tower he builds. The wireless power is the excess solar radiation. The Earth is the tuner, and the fire is what we're seeing globally, just as you mentioned. Good job. This video is just going to be kind of a hodgepodge, but I'm bringing some solutions, too, so stay tuned. Since you can't really hear anything but crickets, I'm going to go ahead and turn that volume down. And draw your attention to the glowing part at the very bottom of the tree where you can see fire is internally burning within the tree and how it's coming right up out the top of the, the trunk of the tree. And it then must be therefore burning all the way through the middle, right up through the middle. It's plasma fire. And this is on the channel Crosshatch. He posted this a few weeks back. I'll include the link in the description. He's posted more than four or five plasma fire videos. He gets it. He may have titled this one something about a tree buzzing and no lightning, but in the comments, you can see plasma burnt tree is what he says there. So he gets it. He's been watching long enough. He sees it, and when he sees it, he knows what he's looking at. And I wanted to take this opportunity to... Thank those of you who have contributed to the discovery and the disclosure process of this alien force that is all around us, that I call plasma fire. <clears throat> I don't do that very often. Like, for instance, a recent video I made featuring, I got carried away covering the flaming cow patties where the uh, firefighter said that the cow pies all around them were lighting on fire, and even though the grass wasn't lighting on fire, and the fire wasn't moving across the surface of the ground just the cow patties were lighting up and so then I showed you that that's a pattern I've identified before multiple times on that video someone sent me a link of that video of the Australian wildfire firefighters and they were drawn to the part where he said that the firefighters defended a house from the fire that was moving in the direction of the house. They surrounded the house with their fire hoses and were successful in keeping the house from burning down and the fire moved on by. And so then they moved down the road to follow the fire to defend other houses. And then when they drove back by that house, it was burned to the ground. And he said that one really hit him hard because they successfully defended that house. And then when they came back, that house was burned to the ground. And I... Failed to even cover that part of that video. I got so carried away with the flaming cow patties. But probably 50% of the content of the plasma fire videos over the past couple of years since I haven't been out over the road. I've probably shown 8 or 10 different plasma fire examples just from right here in Heber where I take a nightly walk over the last couple of years. But all of the others, half of them, have come from referrals where people give me leads saying look at this one or look at that one. So I do thank you to those who have participated in this discovery and disclosure process. Though I'm very conflicted because, because 
You've heard me very often express my frustration with the lack of receptivity and response. People are not receptive or response responsive to the plasma fire phenomenon. And it is illogical when you see that everything is on the line for all of humanity. Every man, woman, and child on the face of the earth is in the crosshairs of this threat of plasma fire. And all of the material wealth that you spend all of your time and pay all of your attention towards, and all of the relationships of all the people you care about, all of it's on the line. And when everything is on the line for all of humanity, it is only rational and reasonable to put in anything less than everything you got is unacceptable and inexcusable. And it is irrational and illogical when everything you work for and all your friends and family are going to be consumed by this plasma fire, yet you pay no attention to it. It's consuming everything all around you, yet you spend your time and pay your attention towards other things. That makes no sense. And so, I don't just focus on the problem. I bring the solutions, and you're looking at the solution, I believe. But people have to become aware of the problem. Problem, reaction, solution. Once the general public becomes aware of the problem of plasma fire, then their reaction will make them available to a solution that they would have previously vehemently opposed. That's the whole Hegelian dialectic of the problem-reaction-solution dynamic. So let's watch this swarm of dragons put forth by Latchkey Hustle and covered by Custodian Files in a recent video. Thank you. Welcome back, everyone. This is Robert at Custodian File, July 24. I uh, hope you've been well. So we have a, a special uh, episode here. Uh, John from Latchkey Hutch just recorded a very impossible video. This is it. I'm giving it all my attention. Uh, basically, what we're looking at should not be happening. If you've been watching my channel for some time, then by now you know what dragons look like. And basically, believe me, I've looked at this frame by frame by frame, slowed it down. Look at this. I, I would say at the very least there's a thousand. At the very least. I know there's a tendency, like you want to explain this away as birds and bugs. But the whole point is, uh, again, once you know what dragons look like and how predictable they are, how they fly with aircraft, that's the only reason he got the video was the air, he's, he's under the runway 40 miles from LAX, but uh, very, very consistent. Record airliners and you'll catch one dragon. So what's going on here? Uh, boy, uh, it's, it's really hard to comment. But I could just tell you when you slow it down frame by frame, uh, there you go. You enlarge it. None of these, none of these are birds, and just and and we and he did post a bug, and I'll post some of my bug videos too. The thing is, bugs look like bugs, birds look like birds. These things have plasma jets. Uh, there is, it's it's consistent. They're just very consistent with these uh, UFO dragons. So what's going on? We don't know. We, we honestly, we do not know. But I find this to be very legit. And uh, maybe they're responding to a 911 call. Maybe they're trying to fix something before it gets broken. I mean, I'm really trying to think outside the box. This is not normal. This is not normal. And I think obviously uh, when there's that many of them, they're working as a network. So what are they trying to, they're working together to fix what? They gotta be fixing something. Something in the timeline? Does something in the timeline go bad? Uh, I gotta tell you for the last couple of years, I swear like I think somebody's messing with the timeline. It would explain, it, it would explain a lot. Um, so it's really hard to, to really read into this, but 
This is very unusual. You certainly have the right to know the UFOs are not top secret. Analyze it, keep this. I mean, up until now, if you had a video with three dragons, that's extremely rare. Uh, after seven years recording 30,000 videos, I mean, there's no such, there's nothing like this. This is just not possible. Uh, I did talk to John and he said a few days prior, there was an unusual amount of military choppers. So maybe this was happening a few days before he recorded this. It, uh, this is easily detectable on our satellites, the military satellites. Uh, they easily can detect. That's how they figured out Marina Del Rey. In 2016, we have new surveillance satellites that went online. And uh, they easily can see these, uh, these things flying around 2,000 miles an hour, the uh, infrared. And obviously it gets attention. Now, is this going to get attention? The computers are going to be firing off. They're, I mean, I could imagine uh, what that was like. So this is, this is way out there. This is something we'll just keep coming back to for a long time. Uh, all, I, you know what? I, I, I don't think we'll get this lucky again. I don't even know how we got lucky to begin with. But it's, uh, this is a very unusual phenomenon, to, to, to say the very least, to say the very least. So please let me hear from you. Share your comments. If you're new, I get it. These have got to be birds and bugs, Robert. But um, it doesn't, it really, I, it's really not that easy. You can't, you can only use that excuse a few times, but you cannot use it every day for three, four, five, six years. There's these very small objects flying in our air. They're baitable, they're predictable. All you do is record aircraft and these things will fly by. And every day I get new video. I just got new video from Oklahoma. Just, I really appreciate that. I'm gonna be posting that too soon. I've, I've got so much new dragon video. So there's a lot I've got, I'm still recording dragon video. I still find it on YouTube with the Blue Angels, Thunderbirds. People send me their dragon videos. This is more than I'm, 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 and I'm retired and I've never been more busier. Uh, okay, let's go to the next. I'll show you some real bug video. Maybe you need it as comparison. That's always fair. I get that. So let's post that. So this was sent to him by the YouTube channel Latchkey Hustle. Looks like he's got 200 subscribers and he titled the video NHI Drone Swarm. And I went there and I asked him, what's NHI mean? And apparently it refers to non-human intelligence. This video is less than one minute and it demonstrates the way that these drones could be used to extinguish plasma fires. We're both graduating from the Electrical Computer Engineering Department at George Mason University uh, this coming May. Uh, we're here, we're just going to test out our, our device that we used that uses sound frequencies to extinguish flames. I see this device being applied to a lot of things. First off, I think in the kitchen, it could be on top of a stove top. Um, but eventually, I'd like to see this applied to maybe swarm robotics where it'd be attached to a drone. And that would be applied to forest fires or even building fires where you wouldn't want to sacrifice uh, human life. Professor Brian Mark really stepped in to help us. Just gave us a lot of support. I think as a whole, engineering is, is really just finding solutions to, to comp, you know, finding simple solutions to complicated problems. You know, engineering is all about finding a way to make the impossible possible, so that's what we did.